plotting. We're firstly going to create a new plan view in which the data will be set up for plotting. Select View, Create, Plan View, and type in Plot. Click Create. In this view, we turn on all the models except for the tins. The tins will be will be creating label contours. Click Select, maximize the view, and zoom all. Firstly, we're going to label the data. To do this, we use the option File AO, Label Map File, Apply. The data we're going to label will be the view and its view plot. The label map file will be in the user library folder and it's called detail survey v10 .label map file. We have the option of either creating one model per label or if we untick the checkbox we can use a prefix and this is preferable when you're sending digital data to people. So we're going to type in some prefixes here. We're going to type in, in lower case, to keep it away from the main survey, txt space ptno space. Ensure to put a space after it. The height, txt space ht space. The code or name, txt space cd space. And we're going to do both vertex attributes, txt space att space, and element attributes. We then click Label. Prior to turning on the data, if we go to the plus button, you'll notice that there's a lot of models have been created. A lot of them are empty. So if we select the option Models, Delete, Empty Models, we can then click Delete All, then Finish. For this tutorial, we're just going to turn on a few of the attribute models. We're going to turn on the attributes for the drainage pipe, TXT ATT drainage pipe, and the attributes for the trees. If we then click select, and if we zoom in, you'll see there's actually some an attribute as a description for the trees. and also for the drainage pipes we have the material attribute and the diameter attribute. Prior to doing any text editing we need to set the scale of the view. So we can finish on this panel, click menu, walk right on settings and click plotting scale. The scale is going to be 1 to 500 so we type in 500 and click set. It's very important to do this before you start moving text around as the text should be set up for the correct plotting scale prior to moving. Before we actually edit or move any text we're going to now bring in the label contours. To do this we select Tins, Contour, Contour Smooth and Label. It's going to be a function which means that we can recalculate at any time the function name will be contour ground and the tin to contour will be ground. We're going to type in a model for the contours. So we'll type in contours for the minor. And we can select the colour to say red. We'll leave the contour increment as 1. If we go to the major contours, we can type in the major contours, say contours major. Again, we can we could have if we wanted to change the increments or just leave that as it is. If we go to the labels tab, we're going to label the major contours only. We don't need to give the labels a particular a unique model. It can, if we leave it blank it'll do it. It'll create the labels in the major contour model. The label method will be 
line removal and centered line facing uphill. The number of decimal places will be zero and we have a textile contour label 1 to 500 preset which will allow which will give two millimeter high pieces of text. The start and end distance will both be 30 so this is the distance from the end of the string and then every 30 meters along the string. We then click process, go to our plus button and turn on the two models. If you wanted to smooth the contours, you go back to the contours tab, tick on smooth contours and simply click process again and it will now smooth the contours. We can click finish on this panel. If at any stage you need to update or rerun the function in the recalc panel, you can walk right on recalc, contour ground, and the contours will automatically update. If we want to add text to the job, it's a matter firstly of setting up the default text properties up the top in the CAD control area. Here we'll just type in a model name, text, in lowercase. We'll change the color to magenta. And we're going to set the text favorite to Arial Narrow 5 Paper. To type in text, we use the option from the CAD text toolbar, the one that says Create and we're just going to put a road name in up here so we'll just pick somewhere pick and accept we can then type in the road name in the panel here click OK now to place it down into the correct position we firstly click V for vertex to bring the vertex point down then you left click at the bottom left corner of the text and you simply move it down into position. So I'll pick somewhere there. To align the text with one of the strings we now left click on the right anchor point and we click T for tangential and pick on a string and accept. So you'll see now that the string is aligned to that piece of text. If you wanted to edit the text, as we've made a spelling mistake here, you press space and you can simply change the text and click OK. It, there's all sorts of other things you can change with the text. Down the bottom of the screen you can see we can change C for color, S for style, H for height, W for factor and so on. To finish on the editing, just press escape once and that's now back to placing another bit of text press escape again and it takes you out of the option if we wish to place a grid on our view in readiness for plotting we use the option toggle grid to set up how the grid looks we click on the menu button walk right on settings and click on grid we can change parameters such as the grid spacing, so we'll make that 50 and 50. We're going to change the text style to ISO. We can put prefixing and suffixing for the text, so we'll type in E star small m for the easting n star small m for the northing. The star will then be replaced by the value. The text height in pixels will just change to 5 to make it a bit smaller and the height for the what's plotted out will make that 3. The text color will be dark green the same as the grid. So if we click set and finish there are a number of ways of doing plots in 12D. The, 
The first plot we'll look at is a quick plot. If you click on the printer icon and click on quick sheet plot. A, an A4 frame is locked into position at the edge of the uh, view. As you zoom in and out, the actual scale changes and updates. What we want to do is actually do a 1 to 500 plot in this area here. So we're going to type in 500 for the scale and press enter. As soon as you press enter, the plot frame is then locked into ground units and we can simply move the sheet around by using the bottom left icon and just move it to the position that you require. So left click, middle click. We're going to plot back to a model and the model name will be Preview Quick Plot. We can change the clean model beforehand to Always Clean and we'll change the style to say Arial for the text and we can give it a couple of just a brief description we've got two lines that we can type in so we'll just say uh, check plot for Eastern Dam we'll change the title color to say white and click plot. Now to view this plot we're going to create a new view give it a name called preview so we select view create plan view and we type in preview and click create in this view we go to our plus button and we can turn on the model preview quick plot and you'll see the dam you don't see a colored fill in the um, in a preview but you would if you were to plot that out to say your Windows device or a PDF file if I wanted to now once I checked it in the view I can now plot it out to say a Windows device go to Adobe PDF and I'll just set up the defaults I'll make it landscape and I click plot and browse back to our working folder and I'll just type in uh, check plot and click save so this is the plot going to a PDF file Right, we'll finish on that panel. The next type of plot we're going to use will be using a title file. So we return to plan view plot and we use the option plot, plot frames, create. Here we locate a title file which is going to be in the user library folder and the one we want here is the sample A1 plan as you select the plan it will automatically fill in most of the parameters in the two tabs the only thing we have to do is type in a scale and give the plot frame an origin so we click on the origin button just pick down here somewhere we don't need to draw we don't need to draw the viewport border so turn that off and click create if we go to our plus button we can then turn on plot frame A1 plan and position it in much the same way that we saw the quick plot frame being positioned. We can then click set finish and we're now going to plot out the plot frame with a title file. If we click on the printer icon select plot frames 
For the tutorial we have a parameter file set up. If you click on the folder icon, click browse and go back up to getting started. There's one there called surveyplot.plotframeppf. So double click and click read. So this is set up parameters such as where the plot's going to be sent, uh, what title file to use and so on. So in the plot frame area we pick the plot frame of the title file. The view we're plotting is plot. We're plotting to a model called plot preview. If we click on title blocks we just tick on use title file. We don't need to fill anything else in. If we click on the plus beside title block click on user title info. Here the plot parameter file has automatically picked our title file for us and filled in the information which we could then go through and change. A new option in version 10 is under symbols where you can add symbols to your plot. We've got a, uh, in this case we've got a north point, little north arrow, which is going to rotate with the plot. Okay, so we click plot and if we then go to our preview view, turn off preview quick plot and turn on preview uh, plot preview 1. So here you can see the title file, your icon, the very handsome surveyor there all the information that you type that was typed in to the title block. Again this can be then sent to say a PDF file. If I just change the plot frame to Windows, set up the PDF file this time for an A1 sheet. So landscape A1. click plot and click save. If you've gone and edited this file at all, you can delete all of the name up the top and you can type in a new plot parameter file that's relevant just to this uh, plot that you did. So we'll just call it training plan plot and click right. That parameter file then can be reused at any time to preset most of the information. Generally you just have to change a few of the things in the title block. 